Hip-Hops is 1987.com. Good afternoon, we're back live from Phillips Arena as our 1-5 Atlanta Hawks are back in the building on this Sunday afternoon for a special matinee as that's right, the Bucks are in town. Giannis Antetokounmpo and the Milwaukee Bucks are in town today coming into the game with a record of 3-2. Now our Hawks suffered a tough loss on Friday night to the Devin Nuggets 105-100, so they'll be looking to bounce back tonight against Giannis and the Bucks. Something we must mention about Giannis, he is one of two players in the NBA right now averaging on over 25 points, 10 rebounds, and 5 assists throughout the young 2017 18 NBA season. Make sure you stay tuned to Hip Hop's 1987. Follow Terrell Thomas and Danny Digital for a full recap and all your NBA action. effort to move the ball. Whoever was on the floor, um, we're trying to limit our just zero pass shots. Um, we're not very good when we do that. So I thought, again, the ball was getting to the second side. Playing through Giannis in the post or Chris, uh, I thought guys were sharing the ball. Having 30 assists showed that. Coach, you say you never worry about Chris. And after a 2 for 11 first half, he bounced back with 7 for 8 in the second half. What was the thing you thought they really got him going in the second half? Uh, I think just the shots, he's getting open shots, they're just not dropping. And anytime you're a shooter, you got to continue to keep shooting. Um, I thought Jet used the, uh, gave him some great advice. He needed to change his club to use the uh, you know, utility club. And uh, <laughs> I thought he did a good job in the second half of picking the right club. But I think, again, uh, we all believe in Chris and that he's going to make the right play. Um, as bad as he shot in the first half, he still 
was plus 26, you know, on the stat sheet, and almost had a triple double. So, um, you know, I thought he, again, the first half wasn't pretty, but I thought, again, Chris is one who's a grown up, stays with the game plan, and makes open shots when he has to. Rashad's a guy that's been sticking with it, inactive last three games, first half, come off the bench, 12 off the bench. Just talk about him just being ready and being a professional. Yeah, I think, uh, again, Vaughn's only 21 years old. It just shows how hard he's been working, and uh, to come, you know, today to pick up the bench, to pick, you know, pick up. With Moose being out, uh, 12 points there in that first half, uh, we need that from him. With Moose out, we need someone on the bench who's going to give us, uh, you know, some points. And I thought Vaughn was professional and came out and played a great game today. You know, what kind of value can he be to you guys if he can consistently put the games together like tonight? Yeah, I think, again, a, a guy who can stretch the defense, uh, who can knock down the open three uh, defensively uh, is big and get his hands on deflections. Uh, again, being counted on, has been out for the last three games, just shows his maturity and his work ethic that he's been, you know, he's ready to go and uh, he answered the call today. Yeah, speaking of answering the call, obviously with the row out, Henson got some more time and, and he really made the most of it. Yeah, I thought Henson, again, he's been playing great for us uh, in training camp and in the start of the season and we're, we're going to need him with with uh, Moose out for the next two weeks. Um, we're going to need him to step up, him and Don and DJ and Giannis. We'll, we'll all see some action at the five. Two weeks for Moose then? I, th I, would, I, would, I would think. It's, uh, that's what I was told. Uh, you know, we came out. Uh, Giannis was really aggressive. Got us off to a good start offensively and on the defensive end. So, um, you know, we followed his lead. And, you know, Chris played really well tonight. And everybody off the bench, it was a collective effort. When you play a team like Atlanta, you know, like, we're a better team. We can't, you know, let these guys even think that they do this. You do. Uh, you know, we go into a game like that knowing that's a young team. It's an organization that's trying to rebuild a little bit. We know we're a better team. Um, but at the same time, you still got to respect them and understand that they're, those are pros over there and the, they're an NBA team. So you got to come out and play hard. You know, stranger to the city of Atlanta, how does it feel to come back home and to play in front of family and friends? I love being home. Um, it's, it's the best city in the world, other than Milwaukee right now. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be home, playing in front of my family and friends and, uh, you know, get a win. The fourth quarter kind of got a little sloppy there. Is that just the nature of the game? I mean, it's... Uh, yeah, you know, they started, they made a few shots. We took our foot off the gas a little bit. Um, but, you know, we have a... Uh, we have some experienced guys, guys that have been to playoffs now. So, you know, we were able to, you know, pick it back up and, and push the lead a little bit. What's your comfort level now compared to what it was a year um, I'm a lot more comfortable. A year of experience and um, uh, experience in the playoffs really makes the world a difference for me. So I'm, I'm comfortable. I know what my role is. I feel like I found my niche with, with this team. And, uh, you know, I love playing with my teammates. How many passes you have today? How many what? Passes, family. Uh, I I actually only had maybe six or eight, um, but I could have got a lot more. But um, you know, I think a lot of people bought their tickets. So, <laughs> Smart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as we're both uh, graduates of GAC, talk about your experience and what it was like in being a Spartan alumni. Uh, you know, GAC was a great school for me. Um, you know, I had a I had a great academic and athletic experience there. Um, hopefully, I can get back to them this summer and go say hello to some of the people, but. Um, you know, I love being back in Atlanta. I hope, I imagine some of them are out there watching. So, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Well, Mal, you picked up the rookie of the year last year. What are some things that you've seen on the court this year to kind of improve your game this season? Uh, you know, just just being a calming presence for our team, especially at the point guard position. You want to be one of the guys on the floor that doesn't get rattled, that's able to keep the pace and keep the team organized. So I feel like I'm, I've been able to do that a lot better this season and, and not be in a rush. Long time no see. Long time no see. What's going on? Doing, right? yeah, I'm good. Hey, I'm good. Lisa, Thank you. I appreciate it. What you still listening to? Man, J. Cole, <laughs> man, Jeezy, you know, the usual. The usual. So, uh, we never finished our one on one. I mean, we can get it. We can go right now, man. If there's you a ball sure? out there. I'm not sure that's what you, you sure want. What you, want. <laughs> you don't look ready. I'm not sure. <laughs> I still got the jump shot. We're going to see. We're going to see. <laughs> You can afford a $20 bet. Yeah. I can afford it. You can afford it. I can afford it. We might have to up it a little bit. Uh, it was uh, really important. You know, usually in games like this, early games, uh, Sunday morning, you know, you come out a little bit lazy. And, uh, you know, we've done that in the past. And for me, 
personally, I just wanted to set a good tone, come out aggressive, uh, play hard so everybody can see that and uh, everybody can play hard and uh, be aggressive. Jason, after the game that was going to be out for two weeks, what does that do to you guys and how does that change how you guys approach you know, the next two weeks of games? You know, Moose is a really big part of this team. Um, guys got to step up. Uh, like the day John Hansen, I think he did a great job, you know, helping the team defensively and offensively. And, uh, you know, you got to hold it down until uh, Moose can be able to come back. Giannis, you're one of two players in the NBA currently averaging over 25 points, 10 rebounds, and five assists per night. What are you seeing different out there in these few games so far this season? Uh, it's my teammates, man. Uh, my, my teammates make the game easier for me. Uh, they, they're always in the right spot. They always uh, give me the ball when uh, they know I got to uh, miss much. And for me, the game is just slowing down for me. Uh, I'm just trying to play hard and uh, try to get a win every night. Are you paying any attention to the MVP chatters? A lot of people are talking about MVP possibly for you this season. Are you paying attention to that noise yet? It, you know, it's, um, to be honest, it's really hard not to pay attention. You know, uh, turning, on, turning on your TV and seeing your face everywhere. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I'm a low profile guy and I want to stay like that because it's a long season. You know, my team, I got to help my team win. You know, and uh, that's what I'm going to try to do. I'm trying not to get in that conversation and uh, get caught up, you know, all those MVP talks and stuff. I just every night I'm going to try to help my team win like tonight. How do you how do you ignore it? I mean, social media is everywhere. You're kind of active on that stuff. Like, how do you? Ignore I just I just delete the apps. <laughs> uh, that's what I do. Uh, and whenever I get back to the app, uh, I got people close to me, uh, like my girlfriend, like my brothers, that tells me you got to delete the app because they know if I get caught up to it, I'm going to lose it. Um, and try to not watch TV. Not try to not watch. Uh, any show that talks about me. <laughs> uh, and just, yeah, spend time, I'm just trying to spend time with my family. To be honest, Chris Middleton was plus 18 in the first half, which was a game high, even though he only shot two for 11. What is it that makes him so effective even when the shots are not falling? He, he moves the ball. You know, whenever he, he's, uh, he's in in the game, the ball moves. You know, uh, he's a great scorer, but the, the ball never gets stuck in his hands. I think that's what makes him special. That's what he was plus 18, as you said, I didn't know that. Um, and defensively, he's always solid. The buck stopped here tonight in Atlanta at Phillips Arena as the Milwaukee Bucks came down into town tonight, picking up a bit 117 to 106 win against our Hawks. Our Hawks now move on to a record of 1 and 6, while the Milwaukee Bucks move on to a record of 4 and 2. Tonight was about the Greek freak Giannis Antetokounmpo as he continues his early season MVP campaign. Antetokounmpo finished the game with 33 points, 12 rebounds, and 5 assists, continuing his average of over 25 points, 10 rebounds, and 5 assists per ball game. He came out the gate firing scoring the Bucks' first nine points and setting the tone early. He spoke to us about that briefly in the post game in the locker room. He also let us know that he's, he continues not to pay attention to the noise. He said it's kind of hard not to hear when you turn on the TV, when you, hear, when you turn to social media and you see your name in the MVP discussions, but he's continuing to stay focused and he let us know that all that matters to him is seeing his team get a victory. Big night for Dennis Schroeder, who finished the night with 21 points for our Atlanta Hawks. Also big night for second year wingman Torian Prince, who continues to be effective and continues to improve game by game as he finished the night with 17 points. Now our Hawks will be leaving Phillips Arena briefly as they'll be headed to Philadelphia to take on the Sixers later this week. Then we'll be back here next Friday at James Hart and Chris Paul and the Houston Rockets coming to town. Make sure you stay tuned to Hip Hop's 1987. Follow Terrell Thomas and Danny Digital for all your Atlanta Hawks and NBA updates. Hip Hop's is 1987.com.